Alright guys, Red here. Welcome to Red Resort. Today we're going to be trying to decide what is the best PvE ship in the game. Now, obviously, this can be a pretty subjective thing and there are a lot of ways to analyse and interpret the variables here. You could, for example, base this on what ship you feel is the most enjoyable to do PvE in. And Christ, even that Aurora is fun to do PvE bounties in. But we're going to have to set some ground rules for our little competition here. First up, we need to be able to handle extreme risk targets. And although a lot of the light fighters would eventually be able to kill a hammerhead, it's invariably a long drawn out process that eats into your credits per hour. So therefore efficiency is also a factor then. So what we're looking for is the ships that have the fastest time to target and the fastest time to kill. In fact, we're going to break this down into three separate categories. We're going to do what ship is the best for just doing straight back to back bounties. What ship is best for doing bounties with some small salvage, specifically just picking out the most expensive loot. And what ship will do bounties but is primarily salvage focused. And in this context, we're talking about the SCU crates found aboard enemy ships. If you've seen the thumbnail, you probably know the ships already. But there are some comparisons to be made with similar ships and why you should choose these over the others. For example, the Inferno wins out over the Ion, the Corsair over the Andromeda, and the C2 is just, well, the C2. It's in a league of its own really, unless you want to do multiplayer, in which case the M2 is a good shout. Or for full actual multiplayer salvage gameplay, you can totally get away with the Reclaimer as well. We'll talk about it as we go though, but if you're only interested in one category, then there should be chapters, so feel free to skip ahead. So, first up, we've essentially got the Inferno versus the Ion. If you've flown these ships, then you'll know why already. But if you haven't, there are a few reasons these are the only two ships in the straight back to back bounty category. Number one is because they are fast as hell to the target. The ridiculous acceleration that Crusader is known for comes in handy when you've just jumped into a target area, allowing you to boost up to full speed, then slow down again with relative ease. This goes hand in hand with the two size two shields that then just let you soak up massive amounts of damage while you just pour molten tungsten onto your targets. And it's really these shields that allow the Inferno to win out over the Ion. If you had to be more tactical and keep your distance and watch your shield regen more, then the extra range afforded by the Ion would definitely be more beneficial. But the Inferno DPS is almost double the Ion. So if you can tank most fights and just unflinchingly let them have the full savage insanity of the Inferno's Gatling, the time to kill is significantly less. Add to that the fact that you never have to have any pips and weapons and the benefits begin to stack. You can always be faster because you have more boost available and your shields are better fed. In the testing I done, the Inferno will last about 10 rounds of ERT before you need to rearm. This is when you're solely going for the primary target of the bounty group and then getting out of there. Sometimes you get 9, sometimes you get 11, depending on what ships have appeared each time. On average, the Inferno can do 10 rounds and a rearm in pretty much exactly 30 minutes. Whereas the fastest time I was able to achieve in the Ion was 37 minutes. The Ares Inferno is an absolute monster and it can strip a pristine fully crewed hammerhead in around 15 seconds. Whereas the Ion will have a couple of full capacitor charges to go through each time. The best strategy I've found for optimum efficiency is to go to Crusader, take the ERTs but save your missiles for the last fight. Because even if you've got only 200 rounds left, the missiles will allow you to finish the last bounty off before you need to rearm. The one thing I will say is now and then a mission will come up that doesn't have a jump marker. It will be to a cave or a wreck site. These will cost you extra time. Now, some of them are actually close enough to a jump marker that taking them doesn't add too much flight time. And that's a gamble you can feel free to take. But what I usually do is just switch to VHRT. You can usually do two VHRT before the server puts up another ERT mission for you to take. Now, this involves you having to quickly scan every mission brief 
for the words cave and wreck site. But if you happen to take one of these by accident, it can add so much time to your run. Because you're having to try and jump out halfway between orbital markers, and then you might have, say, a 200 km flight to do. For refueling and rearming, there are several places depending on the moon you happen to be over. The ones I normally use on Daymar, Shubin Mining, SCD-1, and Mining Area 141. On Yela, Deacon's Research Outpost, and Mining Area 157. On Selen, there's Terra Mills Hydro Farm. Given that the Inferno can do 10 of these in half an hour, you're looking to make around 550 to 580k an hour this way. Which isn't mind-blowing, but it is pretty decent if this is what you enjoy doing anyway. So there it is. The Inferno is the PvE king. But wait. There is another. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to an old friend of mine. The Retaliator Bomber. I honestly nearly never even tested this, because last patch it was just not worth the effort. I was getting all my torpedoes shot down constantly, or they were getting evaded. But I got it out just in case, and wow, I'm really glad that I did. So what I did was, I took out a power plant, and a shield, and replaced the remaining ones with stealth components, and put in a stealth quantum drive as well. Now, I don't actually know if this made a difference, but everything just worked so much better than it did in the last patch. I was able to sit at around 6 kilometers and fire a single torpedo per target. Now, is this faster than the Inferno? Possibly. But in order for it to be, you basically have to pull off an almost perfect run. Sometimes you'll get an outpost that won't restock you, or you'll get an 890 jump that just eats 3 torpedoes for no apparent reason. So the fastest run I got was 28 minutes, and that includes one rearm in the middle. Add another rearm so you can go again and you'd be about the same as the Inferno, except you're down to 40 grand for the restocks. So it's a lot of fun and the stealth seems to work well because those guys didn't even know what was about to hit them. And if you're not bothered about profit per run then this could be an option as well. Ok, so what if I wanted to pick up occasional salvage crates along the way yet still stay solo? Well, in this category we have a face-off between the Andromeda and the Corsair. Now, you could take either to be honest and you'd be fine, so there is room for personal preference here. You could also take the Taurus if you'd like to get the extra capacity, but you'd lose out on that extra complement of missiles. But really, any of the Constellation series would be good and you can go 2 size 5 fixed and 2 size 4 gimbaled and chew through pretty much anything in jig time. Constellation also has a higher overall health pool as well, but I find it tends to lose guns easier. Anyway, none of that matters because the Corsair will definitely put things in the ground considerably faster. And in the test, the Corsair was able to consistently kill a hammerhead in around 30 seconds, whereas the Andromeda came in at 43. However, when it comes to salvaging, how you approach a bounty mission completely changes. You're not looking to just kill the primary target, you're usually looking to scan things and see what's got the best stuff aboard, then you're going to want to carefully soft death that and keep an eye on its location whilst dealing with the rest of the targets. The Corsair doesn't really win any extra points here other than its damage output being significantly higher. The Constellation might have more staying power, but the Corsair can just take them out of the equation faster. It's definitely open for personal preference but for raw efficiency I'd go with the Corsair. It's also got a decent back ramp that makes it easier to load cargo into, which again keeps things moving faster. The only thing you might want to consider is that if you take the Taurus, you effectively gain another 100 SCU of cargo space, which means you can stay out for longer and have more choice about what you want to keep when you find something. The gold rush though for finding multiple millions worth of cargo is definitely over. But there are some here and there, and if you're just casually lifting a few valuable boxes as you go, you can find it swiftly adds up to a nice little bonus to complement your bounties. At this point though, we should also mention what lies ahead for Star Citizen. In the upcoming patch 323, the intention is to remove fixed weapons from the game, which should mean that the Constellation will finally just have 4 size 5 gimbaled weapons, which would be awesome. 
and might prove to be significant here. However, I should point out that the Corsair already has four size 5, and they are complemented by another three size 4. So although I do think the Andromeda will be getting a bump up, I doubt it will make a big difference to this outcome. Check the pinned comment though, and I'll notify you of any changes. Last up, we've got the C2. There's no comparison here really. Stick two size 5 laser cannons on this thing, and just sit there blasting away. Don't even move, let the targets swarm you and just pretend you're a turret. That way when they soft death, the wrecks will all be in easy range and make them easier to track. Obviously they are the best military shields money can buy, and that goes for all the ships in this video. Always stick the best shields in. FR-86 in the C2 and Corsair, and the FR-76 in the Infernal. And that's it. What I will say is, if you are multiplayer, you could maybe go M2 for efficiency with the hit to overall cargo capacity, but I think the real money these days is ERTs and a reclaimer with a guy in the turret with two size 5 Gatlings on it, and then salvaging the ships wholesale. That's some real good money right there. Anyway, let me know your thoughts. No doubt this will all change with master modes and stealth and stuff next patch, so definitely check the dates. I'll leave a note in the comments if this info becomes badly outdated and update you with any new insights. If you've got any questions, don't hesitate at all. I'd like to quickly just say a big thank you to my channel members, Nils Gerdes and Spacecraft. You guys are awesome and thank you for all the support. If you know anybody looking to get into Star Citizen, please use one of the codes on screen now. If this video was any help, remember like and subscribe. And thanks for watching. Whole seven guys.